Hi, I'm Dr. Raymond Douglas from Beverly Hills, California, and here today we're going to do another segment of Thyroid Thursday. And what I'd like to talk to today about is a little bit of the before and after photo that you just saw of the young woman who bravely went through decompression surgery and had thyroid eye disease and Graves' disease. What many people don't realize is that adolescents or children can get this disease also. And it was thought to be much less common, but it's probably a little bit more common than we had thought, especially after kids reach puberty. Then it kind of becomes almost the same as an adult form of the disease. And remember, there are two forms of this disease. One form is where there's a fat predominant disease and you see a lot of eye bulging. And the other is where the muscles behind the eye expand and can actually cause vision problems. Well, in kids, or in adolescents more precisely, the disease can be very severe. It has a whole spectrum associated with it. And you can imagine the social impact that this can cause, especially because you have thyroid abnormalities such as hyperthyroidism. The medication can often cause excessive weight gain, or if you have steroids, it can cause your face to change shape or to you can get heavier or your hair can fall out. So you can imagine how important it is for thyroid control. And that's the number one thing um, that I'd like to stress in this video series that adolescents can often experience these thyroid abnormalities that can be misinterpreted as depression or as mood changes. So it's always important to think of thyroid conditions as being a potential cause for a lot of emotional distress and just not teen you know, acting out time. And that actually um, maintaining normal thyroid levels is really, really important. Well, when adolescents get Graves' disease, the first thing to do is to treat the thyroid. And medication can be a little bit hard for adolescents because it can have a lot of side effects. And sometimes we rely upon radioactive iodine or even surgical thyroidectomy. And radiation and radioactive iodine is sometimes hard to, you know, to think about giving an adolescent that young. Uh, so many times there is a surgical thyroidectomy, but really want to consult your endocrinologist on those issues. The second is the eye disease. Now normally the eye disease in young adolescents is very mild, and they'll often outgrow it. So I prefer to delay surgery or delay inter any interventions as much as possible. But sometimes as, you know, as you're reaching uh, high school and later on in the school years, disease can become fairly significant. But the goal would be then to reverse the disease, but not to do too much surgery if it's necessary. So we want to reverse many of the effects of the disease, but probably still leave the eyes a little on the prominent side because as someone ages, their face will continue to change and the eyes will eventually get a little bit better and better. And most of the time, the disease can be treated quite well with surgery with very little risk of double vision. My personal risk of double vision is less than 5% in most of these cases. So it is very treatable, even though we hesitate on doing uh, surgery in adolescents. But is the story that you've seen in the before and afters that we've posted on our YouTube videos and other things, you can see that the social impact can be profound. Um, for this young lady, she stopped enjoying many of the things that she enjoyed doing in school, such as volleyball, such as you know taking part in activities, and so it can be profoundly disruptive. And I have many patients, I treat a lot of adolescent patients where it's exactly the same, where you have these very profound interventions um, that interfere with um, their life and with their you know, lifestyle and happiness. So there are you know, potential ways to improve this, uh, especially surgically, but even non-surgically, comfort and improvement is, is very important. 
the clinical trial that's posted on our YouTube as a very novel treatment is not available to adolescents. It's only available to patients over the uh, age of 18. And typically, adolescents don't require a lot of medical therapy, such as high-dose IV steroids. In fact, usually the disease, we would prefer not to give these types of medical therapies since they have so many side effects. But I'd be happy to you know, discuss more about adolescents in, in the near future and how they get this disease. But thank you so much for tuning in to our episode. And remember, you can always see more information on our website and on our YouTube channel posted here. Thank you so much.